Hello everyone. Today in this video I'm going to give you some hints and tips on how to keep your condensing tumble dryer operating efficiently. Now the one in the video is a Beko, but most condensing tumble dryers operate on the same principle, so they should have similar components to the ones I'm going to show you in this video. Okay, without any further ado, I'll just show you a few hints and tips on how to keep your tumble dryer drying efficiently. Now obviously the most important thing you need to remember when using a condensing tumble dryer is to empty the water container after each use, unless of course you've plumbed it in to drain the water automatically. So obviously most drawers are located at the top of the tumble dryer these days, but sometimes they're located towards the bottom of the machine. So you should know by now to empty out the drawer after each use. And of course, the next thing you need to do, preferably after each use, is to clean the filter. In this particular model, the filter's located here. You can just clean it just by opening it up, most of them open, and just taking the fluff and lint, and sometimes pet hairs, and just going round like that. Now this one is going to have a bit more of a deeper clean today, because I'm giving this tumble dryer a bit of a service. So I can actually wash this in hot soapy water. As long as it's dry before I put it back in the machine, that's okay. You can of course use an attachment on your vacuum cleaner to clean it, but because mine's got a lot of fluff and lint around this part, I'm just going to rinse it in some water and then I can place it back in the machine once of course I've left it out to dry for a couple of hours or so. When you remove the filter you might find a lot of fluff and lint that's gathered around where the filter is situated in the machine. Now you can get your hand in there Obviously, I would suggest you unplug the machine before you start putting your hand inside anywhere of an electrical appliance, just to be safe. But you know, I'm not going to be able to get my hand right down there. Now, a tip you can use, those radiator brushes you can buy, they're very useful for getting down here. But what I like to use is a vacuum cleaner. Now, my particular vacuum cleaner, I bought an extra long crevice tool for it, so it'll go right down into the groove and hopefully remove all the fluff and lint. The vacuum cleaner should remove the majority of the fluff and lint from around the machine but there might be a few stubborn bits remaining. So for that, use a damp cloth with some mild detergent or one of these surface wipes. And you can wipe around the door seal and the entrance to the drum and into the cavity where the filter sits. So you can give it a thorough clean remove any lint and of course you can wipe around the door itself as well. In the case of a wet wipe you normally can just leave it to dry, it'll only take a few minutes but if you've used the damp cloth just go over it with a dry cloth afterwards just to make sure you've got rid of all the moisture. Another area on your tumble dryer that needs periodic cleaning are the grill vents. On this particular model I've got some here in front of the condenser, we'll look at that in a minute, and there's also a grill here. So again your vacuum cleaner comes in very useful for that, and I've attached the dusting brush on mine. To finish the job properly you can use another wipe or a damp cloth and you can really get into those grooves keep them free of dust do that one and then the other one obviously I'm not taking too much time over this I'm just showing you the principle so the video doesn't doesn't go on for too long 
Now, the next thing you need to do, and a lot of people neglect this part of a condensing tumble dryer, and I have to admit I've neglected mine, which is why I decided to make the video, is the condenser unit at the bottom. Now, on most condensing tumble dryers, the condensing unit will remove. On this one, there's two red tabs that I need to move, and then this whole unit comes out for cleaning. Now, before we clean that, we need to really clean out the cavity first. Now you can see right at the back of the cavity there, there's a lot of black lint and fluff. So it's gonna be a bit tricky to get to that. Now, with a condensing tumble dryer, it's best in this part not to use your vacuum because when I've taken mine out, there is water here. So you don't want to be getting, unless you've got a wet and dry vacuum, of course, and then that'll be fine. So I'm just gonna wipe that round But then for all that fluff right at the back, I've got um, a radiator brush that I can use to dislodge that. And then I can use the vacuum cleaner to remove it. This is my radiator brush. You can get hold of them from hardware stores or online. I expect Amazon sell them. And this is another alternative you can use instead of a vacuum. And you'll be able to see that when I put the brush in, it will actually come out at the bottom there, so you can actually just use that just to brush round. As you can see, it's still dislodging fluff that the vacuum's missed, I didn't do it that thoroughly, so that's getting the worst of it off. There we go, a lot more fluff's coming out. And then I can use this, because it's long enough, I can use this to reach the lint right at the back of the condensing cavity. So there you go, that's the inside of the condensing cavity free of fluff and lint. Only took me a few minutes. Now let's get on to actually cleaning the condenser itself. Now this is my condenser and as you can see I've left it rather a long time to clean. Now you can remove all this with a wet wipe or a damp cloth but what you can't get at is inside the condenser. This will have a lot of fluff and lint actually in here. The best way I've found of cleaning this is to take it to your bathroom where you've got a shower and use a shower attachment to flush it all through. Okay then, so I've put the condenser unit at the bottom of my shower and I've put a tea towel as well just in front of the drain to catch all the lint and hairs that are bound to be flushed out of this condensing unit just so I don't lock my drain up. So basically you just get your shower attachment and start flushing it through. Now I'm going to spend a few minutes to clean this properly, but as you can see, there's an awful lot of, probably a lot of dog hair in there as well, because I've got dogs, and uh, lint and fluff. So I'm going to spend a few minutes to make sure it is thoroughly cleaned. And then I'm just going to shake this and leave it somewhere to dry out before I put it back inside my tumble dryer. So that's my condenser unit, a lot cleaner than it was a few minutes ago. I've got rid of all the lint and dog hair that had gathered in here, so it's going to work a lot more efficiently now. Another thing just to point out, there should be some seals. This one's got a seal here at the bottom and also a seal here. Just again, wipe those with a wet wipe or a damp cloth just to ensure that they're free of any lint. And then when it's dry, you can pop it back in your tumble dryer. Well, that's just about the end of my video. All I've shown you today is just the very basic maintenance tips that anyone should be able to perform to keep their tumble dryer operating efficiently. Obviously, if you need to have a more deeper clean on your dryer, if it needs a thorough defluffing, 
then I suggest you get a qualified person to do so. One last tip I'll mention before I go, and this applies not only to tumble dryers, but to any major appliance, washing machines, fridge freezers. When you get them, especially when they're brand new, this is the best time to do it before you install them, is to protect the cabinet with some car polish. Now, I use this particular one. I'm not advertising it. Any car polish should be fine. This is Auto Glim. It's a, it's a good polish for the car, so it's also a very good polish for all your major appliances. So a couple of coats of that before you install your appliance should help it keep looking good for longer, especially if you install it, say, in a cellar or an outbuilding or a garage where my tumble dryer normally lives. When I got it brand new, a couple of coats of this has ensured that the cabinet still looks as good as it was when I unboxed it. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments section below. Please thumb up and please subscribe. And I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.